Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing With Den. Today I'm going to show you how I built my new um, pole support or pole rest for the new match fishing seat box and also a butt plate or butt rest. Uh, if you remember um, when I did the original demonstration video I pointed out that I hadn't actually built in uh, a butt strap on the um, seat of the box and so I made a, a separate one. So this is the pole support or spray bar and it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect to see on a commercially bought one. And the reason for that is of course that that's the way I've built it. So nothing too much to, to discuss there. Uh, the EVA is probably the only slightly different thing which is only across the top. Um, I could have made it go all the way around but didn't seem any point because the pole's only going to sit on the top. The backrest or back uh, pole support is actually detachable you just take the two screws out so when you're not using it you can uh, store it away in your bag and the good news is these things cost me hardly anything to uh, to build they're all left over from the uh, original match fishing seat box uh, project uh, did a video on that a couple of weeks ago to demonstrate the the full thing um, and it might be an idea if you watch that before you watch this video and then under you'll understand where we're coming from I'll put a pop-up up up above to give you a link to it and there'll also be another link down in the description box down below. Now as I've said in the past I have no formal training whatsoever in either woodwork or metalwork so this is just something I've learned as I've gone along and it's not difficult guys um, honestly anyone can build this kind of thing um, so I think the next thing is let me show you how. I've cut out all the metal parts and as you can see this isn't going to be a complicated uh, fabrication. We've got the two forward supports, the actual bar itself which is going to have some EVA on the top and two uprights. If you decide to build one, here's the measurements. These are 200 millimeters, these are 300 and this one is 680 in length. Now the thing is there's nothing to say that you can't build it slightly differently to suit whatever you're going to build but for me this just just seemed about right uh, metal wise this is just the the metal I use for the frame of the the main box it's the 38 millimeter by 25 by 2 millimeter aluminium same for these two and these are just um, 20 millimeter legs okay so first things first then I'm going to drill a 25 millimeter hole through here each end will have the usual 25 millimeter holes but we're going to allow a little bit more distance uh, from the edge to the edge of the hole here and you'll also notice we've got slots cut in it and the reason for that is that if we go back to this one which is what we've been using on the box when I put that onto the leg and lock down this actually grips really really strongly you just have to just nip it and that'll hold my weight but we don't need it to hold my weight and also if you do that it can put a little uh, circular mark on the leg which makes the leg sort of grind up and down a bit so for these ones where we're going to have something which is fitted on in this way um, it could actually move up and down but it could also be moving side to side from time to time as I uh, rearrange things so this time I've got a through bolt from that side all the way through to here it's locked off with the nut inside so that the bolt can't move but then I've just got this female knob here which if I tighten up is now fine now I wouldn't trust that to hold the legs up but what it does mean is if I just slacken off just a fraction I can now move it around on the, uh, the upright without causing uh, the damage that the other way of doing it does So that's all four holes drilled. The only thing now is that uh, they are a slightly tight fit. I don't want to force it through and I need a sliding fit. In fact I've already done this end and if I push this one through now you'll see immediately that that's a really good fit. So I've just got to finish off making the others into the same size of fit and then we can move on. Final couple of operations is just to take my uh, workpiece over to the table saw, put it on like that, and then just literally take the table, table saw blade through it. 
So what that does, as you can see, is it's given me a slot through here, which is about three millimeters. And I've also taken it slightly up here as well, because we're gonna be squeezing this together this time. And that seemed like a good idea to me. May not be necessary, but I liked it, so that's what I've done. I've also drilled a six millimeter hole all the way through the piece here. And now what we're going to do is to take a six millimeter stainless steel bolt, a nut, which hopefully I can get on in front of the camera. There we are. And then I'm just gonna take my nut driver and gently holding the, the nut, allow it to go through. So, and then just tighten up. And be careful on this one. If you allow it to go too fast, it will spring back and hurt your wrist. So very slowly. Then when it tightens up, there. So that's now not going to go anywhere. And the only other thing we have to do, take a couple of washers, one of the female knobs, and just apply it. As I've shown you before, put that in, tighten down, and this will now, it takes a bit more tightening by the way than the, the other way of doing it, but it doesn't mark so much. So that's the way I've done it on this. I'll be doing the same at this end, and putting a couple of end caps on as well. And that's it, that's the final product. These little end caps aren't strictly necessary, but I put them on because I had them in the drawer and they also mean that I can't spin the, the nut off but you don't absolutely need them but if I do catch my leg on it when it's sitting in front of me at least I won't scratch my leg. So now we've got to build the crossbar. As you can see um, it's basically a repetition of the sorts of things we've already done. Uh, these two holes here uh, 25 millimeters. I've used the threaded insert method purely because I did it and then realized that I could have used the method I've just shown you. But this is actually going to sit on top of the bars, like so. And then there'll be a, a little screw just here as a sort of a stop. So this isn't actually gonna to have to move and therefore I'm gonna stay with this way of doing it rather than um, doing it the other way. If you wanna do it this way, absolutely fine, go for it. If you're going to do it with the threaded inserts, as I've done here, that, that's fine as well. Um, if you haven't seen any of my other videos on how to do that, I use rib nuts. And I've actually done a separate little video, a couple of minutes, just to show you how to insert rib nuts the correct way around into the side of these um, cross members. I'll put a, a little pop-up coming up above and there'll also be a link in the description box down below. And if you just have a quick look at that before you start to do the threaded inserts, you shouldn't go wrong. So that's everything complete on the crossbar. Uh, we've got the holes drilled, we've got the inserts and the knobs on. The only thing we've got to do now is to fit this. This is EVA foam, the same sort of thing that you get on the, uh, rod handles. Um, in fact it started life as one of these things which is actually an EVA floor tile and turns out it's very easy to cut. I just cut a strip off this. Now I did it on the bandsaw because it was easier, but I've just cut this so it fits onto the crossbar like that. Didn't need it to go all the way around. I did think of actually using a, um, a circular piece, there, but that was just going to make things too difficult. And the rod's only, sorry, the pole is only going to go on the top. So all I'm going to do now is to get some uh, impact adhesive, put a layer on here, a layer on here, wait for it to dry, and then just stick it down like that. You can do this by just taking it straight out of the tin, using the spatula, and just spreading along both surfaces. I've tried that in the past, and it didn't work out quite as neatly as I wanted. So I've actually gone to the spray-on version of it. And in order to make a neat job, as you can see, I've just taped off with paper tape everything I don't want to be covered because you do find that this stuff does spread. I've also put some greaseproof paper down onto the, the surface 
Doesn't have to be grease proof, I just happen to have that available. So now I'll just spray on both surfaces and leave them to dry for 20 minutes, half an hour or so. I like to get a good layer on the surfaces. Uh, whether I'm putting too much on or not, I'm not absolutely sure, but it works for me and so that's why I'm doing it. So, time for coffee, I think. It's been about half an hour and I've come back and both items are touch dry now. So, now is the time we have to stick them down. This is the point where I have in the past made a complete mess of things because as soon as these two items touch, they will bond. Luckily, there's an easy way around it. I just grab myself a piece of scrap and as you can see, if I put it onto the, the glue here, it doesn't glue. But what that's for is a spacer. I'm going to try and do this for you live. And what you do is place your EVA down. I don't know how well you can see this. I'll try and move it maybe that way a bit. That should maybe do a bit better for you. Just literally take the greatest care to get the EVA in the right place and then let it sit and then gently place it on the bar and you see how this is holding everything up so I'm actually having to push down because it doesn't stick that means I can control everything and that actually wasn't too bad at all was it so, just push it down a bit. Obviously the glue isn't cured yet, so that'll probably take overnight to do. But now I can take off all of the uh, tape and we can finish the project off. So the backrest or the butt rest for the pole um, is actually going to be quite simple to make as well. As I said before, it's based on this thing, which was that prototype I made years ago. Um, just to try it out and I never actually bothered to uh, to make a real one. So I suppose to that extent this new one is prototype 2. It should work, I hope it works, uh, but really only time will tell with this one, but it's so simple. We've got a back plate of 3mm aluminium which is 50mm uh, wide and 150mm long. No particular reason for the length, it's just what seems about right. Part of the front support is going to be formed by this block, which is 65 millimeters long, and it's exactly the same 38 by 25 by two millimeter aluminium we used for the um, pole rest. These two pieces are just 20 millimeter aluminium, and these two slivers are one millimeter. And I've cut these to go inside like that. These slivers are only there purely to hold that in place firmly so I don't have to have the thing falling apart when I'm trying to uh, fix it all together. First thing I'm going to do is insert the 20mm tube aluminium and the 1mm sliver into the side and just push it in so it sits like that. Same at the other side. So now we have a, an enclosed box. I've also marked the back plate so that this will sit in the centre there and I'm going to mount it with rivets in a second. these side pieces secured so now I'm going to attach the box to the back plate again using rivets but this time I'm going to be using heavier duty 4 millimeter rivets originally I only used these 3.5s that's the basic mechanism taken care of so in order to do this strap idea what I'm going to use is some of this 
three millimeter uh, by 25 millimeter rubber and some of that uh, strapping I used for my uh, seat box strap itself. I'm going to glue these two together in exactly the same way as I did for the pole spray bar that we've just completed. But of course in good old Blue Peter fashion, this is one I made earlier. Um, I've actually left it overnight because uh, as I said to you, when you first do this uh, impact adhesive, it does stick and it won't move, well, very, very little anyway. Um, so what I found in the past was on this one that there was a little bit of separation. So I've given myself a form, which happens to be a jar of turmeric, and just clamped a bunch of uh, scrap wood in. That, as it happens, is exactly um, 65 millimetres across which is of course exactly what the distance from one side of the box to the other is. So if we now take this off, with a bit of luck, we've got a form strap. Now the reason I've used the webbing and the rubber is that when I first made this one, I just used rubber. And I couldn't understand why my pole tip was gradually getting lower during the day. Well. That is, of course, until the whole thing snapped and the pole fell in the water and I had to go in after it. So, make sure you use webbing, guys. What we're going to do next is fit the webbing strap. And again, I'm going to do that with uh, rivets. I've measured and cut the strap so it sits, when it's down at either side, at about 65 millimetres high. Now, the base of my pole is about 50 millimetres, so it gives me some room. If I ever need to, I can just drill them out and uh, make this a bit smaller. But we're going to go with 65mm to complement the 65mm across there. Now, I have cut it off on the bandsaw, but you do tend to get little um, stray pieces from the webbing. So it's worth just, just literally singeing off. Always wet your fingers first. Singeing off there so that you don't have any fraying. Same on the other side, of course. Wet your fingers, and there we go. And they are starting to look pretty similar now, aren't they? The only difference is that this one was made to be adjustable, although in the end I never did bother to adjust it. So I've just made this one fixed. If I really do have to uh, make any changes, I can soon take the strap off and either make it shorter or longer or, or whatever. And the last thing I've got to do this to this now is to put two six millimeter holes in here, because that's where the fixing bolts are gonna go. And, as always when I'm doing these things, I think I've got to the end and then I realise I can do something to make it a bit better, which is what I've done. So I've just put these two um, pieces of 20mm tube on the back and the idea is that instead of having the flat plate against it, that'll now make it stand away from the box a bit and give me a little bit more room to bring the pole backwards. It will still um, collapse the foam a little bit in here, but it gives me that little bit of um, safety so that if the pole moves a little it'll be fine and I've made up these bolts to put through it so if I just push that through there for now just to show you that can go in like that put the other one in like so and that gives you the basic idea right what I do have to do is to put captive nuts on these inside here so that they, they can't pull out and they'll just hold in place. I've also obviously got to cut them down to the right size, but the main thing I have to do now is to use these little threaded inserts for wood, which you can buy in the, the DIY stores. I've got to enlarge these holes to eight millimeters and then they just screw in. Here's the threaded insert. Just use a hex key and gently turn. Need to push against it as you go so it gets some purchase and then stop when it's flush. And there we are, that's the threaded inserts fitted. Okay, well I've got the retaining nuts fitted into the bolts now and I've cut the end of the, the bolts off to fit. So it's just a question of putting it on. Just line up the screws, or the bolts rather, and start screwing in.
And that's it. Done. Give you a closer look. Just maybe tighten that a fraction, but that is not going anywhere. I did have one final thought, and that was to fit this uh, rubberized sticky back uh, material onto the, the base section here. The idea being to protect the pole uh, when I ship back in, if I clang it off the, the metal here, this will actually absorb the blow and make sure I don't do any damage to the pole butt section. So that's it for another one then, folks. Um, really wasn't a difficult project this time. Next time we'll be looking at uh, rod rests, both for float fishing and feeder fishing. But in the meantime, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, click the button. If you want to subscribe, you can. And until the next time, bye for now.